Today on What It's Like, this car belongs to a viewer of the channel. And if you're watching, thank you so much for letting us feature this amazing 1956 Oldsmobile Super 88 two-door holiday hardtop. But before getting into all of that, I am Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we dive in deep, give specs, period correct ads, as well as perceptions that other channels simply don't show. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. If that sounds of interest to you, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Let's talk 1956 Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile offered three trim levels, starting in the basement, Olds 88, then Super 88 in the center, 98 at the top. The Oldsmobile Super 88 was marketed as the car with power personality. It was offered as a two-door sedan, four-door sedan, two-door convertible, two-door hardtop, four-door hardtop. Oldsmobile called their hardtop cars holiday. So if you ever hear that term, Oldsmobile holiday, they are referring to a hardtop car. Some will even say Olds holiday hardtop or just holiday hardtop. Standard creature comforts of the Oldsmobile Super 88 were cigarette lighter, turn signals, rubber floor mats, aluminum door still plates, sun visors, dual horns, line trunk, rotary door latches, armrests, bumper guards, courtesy lights, carpeting, foam, rubber seat cushions, deck lid with 88 script. Options included, but not limited to, air conditioning, backup lights, cadet visor, deluxe heater and defroster, deluxe horn, deluxe steering wheel and horn ring, deluxe wheel discs, dual exhaust, electric six-way seats, electric antenna, electric clock, electric windows, front courtesy lights, padded dashboard, parking brake signal light, power brakes, power steering, radio, Deluxe 6-tube push button, radio, super deluxe 8-tube, which was signal seeking, rear speaker, tinted glass, white wall tires, and windshield washer. There was also the Alltronic Eye, which our car has, and apparently if it saw high beams and your high beams were on, it would dim them to the low beam setting. Very interesting feature for 1956. Real quick correction, if it saw any light from any car that was coming towards you and your high beams were on, it would dim to the low beam setting. Let's talk specs. 203.3 inches long. It rides a wheelbase of 122 inches. Weighs 3,840 pounds. Price 2,520 pounds, which is equivalent to you spending $27,439.37 in the year 2022. Total Oldsmobile 1956 production was 485,458 units, of which 179,000 were Super 88s. Of that number, Holiday Hardtop, two-door Holiday Hardtop was 43,054 units. This car could average 11 miles per gallon. Zero to 60 was in 10.6 seconds. One engine on offer, 324 cubic inch displacement, V8, 5.3 liters. Makes 240 brake horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 350 foot-pounds of torque at 2,800 RPM with a bore of 3.9 inch. Stroke of 3.4 inches. Compression is 925 to 1, wrapped in cast iron. It is fed with a four-barrel quadrajet carburetor. Our car has a three it has a tri-power setup with three two-barrel carbs on it. I think that was aftermarket. I'm not entirely sure. Put it in the comment section below if that was an option or that was added after the fact. Two transmissions on offer. The Hydromatic, which was a four-speed automatic transmission and a three-speed manual. All right, let's talk about this door panel. Look at these colors. So here's an armrest or and the door handle to pull, pull it close. This is the door handle to get out. This is the window crank for the vent window. This is the window crank for the big window. And just notice how it's all trimmed out. This one's got a nice door pocket for the door. I also wanted to show you this. See this chrome piece here? When you open the door, 
Chevy's did this too. This part here goes up past this trim piece. So when you open the door, did you see that? How it just flips up out of the way? It's an interesting, interesting feature. I never really noticed that, but it's on Chevy's too. I noticed it the other day when getting in a 55 Chevy. All right, getting into the rear seat, just simply slide this, push the seat forward. That's all the access that you have to get back there. All right, sitting in the back seat, lots of headroom back here. It's actually, it's actually really nice back here. There's lights. So you've got lights on the side as well as coat hooks and there's another light and another coat hook. I love the fake convertible top feel and look. These chrome ribs going across the ceiling like a convertible top. And just check out the seats back here. They're very upright, as you can see over here on the profile of the seat against something that is solid. They're very upright, but it's not so bad. I could imagine on a really long trip, it would get it would almost feel like you're sitting in church because it's so upright, but it's not so bad right now. Look at these. I don't know if you that's to hang your coat on or a blanket so you get so you stay warm in the winter time or just a handle to hold on to. Armrest. Notice it dips down. Ashtray on that side as well as window crank. This one does not have a center armrest back here. Over here, same thing. There is a ashtray, as well as there is a button here. I'm not entirely sure what that does. I thought, I thought that that button would control the light, but it doesn't. Maybe it does when the door's shut. But there isn't, there isn't a button on that side. So if you know what this button does in the comment section. Here is what the window looks like in the back when it's rolled down and how it goes down. It goes down much like a 55 Chevy. It stops right about here and then it goes the rest of the way down. But notice this dips down just like a Chevy, but there's not the same, it's not in the same spot. Here's what the rear visibility looks like through the rear glass. It's a wraparound piece of glass. I love wraparound windshields whether they're in the front or the back, they look very elegant. This is what the front looks like from the back. Love the curved dashboard, love the wraparound windshield. Here's what I look like. Lots of headroom. There's more headroom in the front than there is in the back. Um, but it's a very nice driving seating position. Here's what the horn sounds like. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person looks like. There's enough room underneath the steering wheel to do this with your hand. This is what first person would look like over the hood. This is what your sun visor situation looks like. No courtesy mirrors. This one's got a big rear view mirror that has the daytime nighttime feature. On to the button switches and knobs, starting at the bottom left or the bottom of the dashboard. Very small, but useful light. Just above that, on to the right-hand side, is the handbrake release with a warning light when the handbrake is pressed. Right to the right of it is a knob that I'm not entirely sure what it does. Uh, owner told me what it does, but I totally forget. So if you know what it is in the comment section below, just up from that is a windshield wiper switch and then in the center is the button for the windshield washer feature right above that is for the headlights off to the right of that is all of the climate control settings and when i mean climate control settings it's mostly heater and ventilation settings at the very top controls the fan speed notice it says low and high right below it is defroster and right below that is for the heat and side note the way that this operates is when these levers are pulled out, they are activated. When they are pushed in flush with the dashboard, they are off. 
Moving to the instrument panel, question, do you see a light bulb when looking at this dash design? I totally do. Anyway, starting on the left and working to the right, generator light, turn signal indicator, oil light, the speedometer is right in the center, and notice the 120 mile per hour. The car may go faster than that, but it can only track speeds up to 120 miles per hour. Right in the center, right underneath the needle is the miles driven gauge or odometer, fuel gauge right below it, drive select modes, neutral, drive, second, low, reverse. It's a four-speed hydromatic. I was told low will give you first and second because first gear is super short, like five miles an hour-ish, and then it shifts to second. But so does that mean if you put the car in second, are you really in third or does third come with fourth? If you know, in the comment section below. Just moving to the bottom right, this controls the air ventilation. The top one controls the right air ventilation and the bottom one controls the left air ventilation just to the right of that is the ignition switch just above that is the cigarette lighter this car has two ashtrays in the front notice look all you do is push it it's like a trap door or a hidden compartment and that's where the ashtray is it's really cool radio with radio controls in the center as well as glove box is also in the center at the bottom of the glove box there is a speaker control the passenger side ashtray is located on the right side of the radio control. And notice it works just like the driver's one. It's just a trap door. It's really cool how that operates. Moving to the right, there is a beautiful clock positioned right in front of the passenger so they can watch time pass as they're driving down the road. Here to the trunk, I already unlocked it. We're just gonna open her, open her up here. Look at how big this trunk is. It's absolutely massive. This is full size spare. And notice this is a radial tire brand new radial tire there tire jack absolutely huge trunk all right coming to the under the hood section getting underneath the hood just check out this it says oldsmobile down here it's very awesome looking grill so the hood release is right here and you have to hold it Pull it all the way out and pull up on the hood it's a very heavy hood but just check out this engine this one has tri power the owner told me that it's three two barrel carburetors so this thing would probably move really nicely down the road look it's got windshield washer on to the pros and cons. I'm getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 years, 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positive side, they are long underrated, yet still quite affordable. Good performance, tasteful, mid 50s styling, solid craftsmanship, active club and good investment against it. They are still hard to find in good condition, though that is changing. Some body slash trim parts are scarce. Over chromed dashboards. I, I disagree with that last statement. There is a lot of chrome on the dashboard, but I think it's all in good taste. But that's just my opinion. Anyway, on to name that tune. I'm looking for the correct name of the band as well as song title. First person to give me both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Sweeter than wine. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo!